On the morning of May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens violently erupted, becoming one of the most memorable geological events in recorded U.S. history. It left behind a wake of death and destruction that can still be felt 42 years later. Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens rises from the heart of the Cascade Range in southern Washington, where volcanic peaks cut sharply across dense forests and deep river valleys. Mount St. Helens became world famous after its catastrophic 1980 eruption, reshaped the landscape and replaced its once perfect cone with a vast, open crater. Mount St. Helens rises from the heart of the Cascade Range in southern Washington, where volcanic peaks cut sharply across dense forests and deep river valleys. Mount St. Helens became world famous after its catastrophic 1980 eruption, reshaped the landscape and replaced its once perfect cone with a vast open crater. You know, I was a kid when Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, but I remember seeing the images on TV and ever since then I've been fascinated by the place. And we're here today, so let's go explore the area and learn more about Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens has never truly returned to a dormant state as earthquakes, ground deformation, and heat deep below its surface continue to signal internal activity. Mount St. Helens is now entering a new phase of cooling and subsidence at its lava dome, raising a critical question. Is the volcano finally settling or silently rebuilding pressure once again? Let's find out. Chapter 1. Lava Dome's Monster Mystique Monster, Miracle, or Messenger what dwells inside Mount St. Helens' lava dome? It rises like a cryptic monument in the caldera, forged in the firestorms of 1980 and slowly reshaped by decades of shifting forces. For years, the dome's steady growth gripped both scientists and the public with the question, is this a nascent force gathering for another outburst? Or a remnant, slowly solidifying into stone and memory? Standing amid the blast zone, the dome feels more than geological. It's the mountain's exposed core, its raw surface a testament to both violence and the resilient processes of the earth. Since the eruption, rain and snow have battered the dome, yet it remains, stubborn and inscrutable. Hikers and researchers feel a quiet apprehension at its rim, born of stories of sudden eruptions and remarkable survival. The mystique of a monster within the dome is fueled by ambiguity. When magma rises, it brings new heat and pressure, promising transformation and risk. Monstrous means not only destructive, but also points to the unpredictable vitality beneath the Earth's surface. The doctrine of the Cascades reminds us that every serene day can be an illusion, borrowed from unknown reserves of energy below. Between 2014 and 2016, measurements tell a story of change. The dome, which once surged and smoked, is now radiating less heat, losing thermal energy, and visibly subsiding. Where previous years brought new lava and steam, the current era hints at retreat, a once menacing force withdrawing. Yet locals sometimes insist you can still sense the mountain's presence, an intuition that data alone cannot wholly dismiss. Intuitive. So what does it mean when the dome morphs, when the so-called monster seems to fade? Is the quiet a sign of safety or an intermission before the next act? The answer is buried not in what's visible, but in the unseen exchanges of warmth and pressure deep beneath our feet. It is this enigma that drives modern geology, compelling us to observe and interpret even as the dome silhouette grows fainter on the skyline. Ultimately, the dome teaches that legends endure not just through certainty, but through enduring questions and what remains possible. Chapter 2. Thermal Energy's Truth Revealed It starts with a puzzle. Does changing heat signal a volcano's calm or its next move? For years, the dome was the focus of anxious fascination, with sensors recording shifts in temperature and energy. Is this the true pulse of threat or the sign of a healing landscape? Heat is a volcano's voice. Scientific instruments serve as interpreters. High-resolution thermometers are placed in cracks and vents to gauge the dome's shifting exhalations. Hot gases, steaming fissures, subtle surface warmth. This web of data forms a tapestry, each number part of the Earth's unfolding narrative. From 2014 to 2016, the dome's thermal emissions trended downward. Subsidence, slight but measurable, underscored this cooling, suggesting the mountain was easing rather than priming to erupt. In lab settings, these observations appear as steady curves, 
the kind scientists hope will remain level. Why is this important? Volcanic energy, measured as heat and movement, is the force that shapes domes and sometimes fuels eruptions. When energy ebbs, it suggests no new magma is pushing its way upward, at least for now. A quiet dome hints at a reprieve, a period where the cycles of heat and pressure are at rest. But volcanoes, like weather, can be fickle. Does decreasing heat mean all clear, or only a pause in a much longer story? The historical record shows volcanoes have cooled for years or decades before erupting, sometimes with little warning. This uncertainty animates the need for constant expert vigilance. Chapter 3. Geology's Hidden Machine What if every twist and murmur of Mount St. Helens is less a mystery than a pattern, one a machine can help unveil? Enter the analytical model, a silent observer, composed of algorithms trained to hear volcanic activity too faint for human senses. How does this work? Remote arrays and subsurface probes stream data, seismic lines, ground vibrations, and the faint hiss of gases. Sensors track tiny shifts. Software detects patterns a human might overlook, such as faint harmonics or subtle sequences buried in noise. Where once researchers relied on human observation alone, machine learning now sifts through millions of data points to pinpoint the faint anomalies that signify true change. The strength of these models is not prescience, but in spotlighting trends and rare signals, a sudden uptick in tremors or an anomaly in heat flow that guide decisions and interpretations. Does the model replace human expertise? No, it augments it, discerning the underlying patterns that might reveal if the dome's quiet is genuine, or if subtle warning signs are being masked by apparent calm. Through this collaboration, Mount St. Helens becomes less impenetrable, a partnership of algorithm and human insight designed not to predict with certainty, but to identify change early enough for safe response. Chapter 4. Earthquake Swarms quiet giants speak. What meanings hide within the earthquakes around Mount St. Helens? While occasional tourists likely never feel these tremors, often less than magnitude 2.0, scientists track each one, seeking the outline of what moves beneath. Earthquake swarms are crucial in volcanic realms. Not all earthquakes come from tectonic shifts. Some are caused by hot fluids and gases moving through underground cracks as magma nears the surface. Prior to 1980s eruption, such earthquake swarms intensified, forming a pattern now closely monitored. Seismic stations encircle the dome, picking up even the faintest vibrations. Sometimes, short-lived swarms suggest subtle shifts as the mountain settles. But most swarms in recent years, particularly from 2014 onward, have signaled only internal adjustment, not escalation. To date, there has been no major pattern of strong, upwardly migrating tremors or swarms signifying new magma movement beneath the dome. This quiet does not mean risk is absent, only that major warning signs have not emerged. The memory of 1980 keeps scientists particularly vigilant. However, ongoing data show a landscape at relative repose. Geology's answer remains careful. Every cluster of earthquakes is a new message, but not all are harbingers of danger. The relative quiet means vigilance persists, testing every fluctuation for signs of potential escalation. In the shadow of Mount St. Helens, silence is analyzed, not ignored. A discipline born of experience and continual monitoring. Chapter 5. Satellite Eyes and Domes Dance Is the unseen the greatest danger? Satellites quietly orbit Mount St. Helens, offering viewpoints far beyond what is possible from the ground. Their sensors penetrate cloud, forest, and snow to observe the faintest rising or falling of the dome, measured to millimeters in accuracy. Satellites, using technologies like Synthetic Aperture Radar, SAR, and GPS, provide before and after measurements of the dome. These allow for the creation of detailed time-lapse maps, tracking the mountain's profile with precision. Other satellites carry spectrometers, tracking gas emissions for clues to changes below the surface. Analytical, the results from 2014 to 2016 align with ground findings. There is no evidence of major ground swelling or abnormal displacement. Instead, the dome is quietly cooling and subsiding, supporting confidence in its current state. These satellite observations, refined by ground-based sensors, yield a robust picture of stability and slow change. Yet limitations persist. Satellites cannot see far into the Earth's deeper layers, 
Subtle magma lingerings can pass undetected if not accompanied by surface changes. As such, reassurance from satellite data is matched by ongoing multi-level observation, combining radar, GPS, and in-person visits. In the vast, wild reaches of the Cascades, these tools act as tireless sentinels, ensuring even gradual changes are noted. Satellites provide a perspective unobtainable by other means, a crucial asset for a mountain as unpredictable as Mount St. Helens. Their continuous surveillance is a vital aspect of alerting and preparation, helping ground crews calibrate their understanding and the urgency of response. Chapter 6. Debris Flows and Hidden Peril Is the next disaster often overlooked? On the slopes of Mount St. Helens, the dramatic spectacle of eruptions and lava can overshadow quiet, enduring hazards, namely the risks from water and debris. Lahars, landslides, and fast-moving avalanches pose threats even during apparent volcanic quiet. Such hazards depend not on new magma, but on the landscape structure. After the 1980 eruption, ash and rubble blanketed valleys, and heavy rain or sudden snowmelt since have triggered dramatic debris flows, destroying bridges, diverting rivers, and reshaping forests well away from direct volcanic vents. Present-day thermal trends, showing a cooling and subsiding dome, appear reassuring on the surface. However, structural changes or heavy weather can still destabilize slopes or trigger flows downslope. The weakening of the dome, even as it cools, leaves loose debris that rain or earthquake can mobilize into rapid destructive movement. Modern monitoring includes cameras and sensors placed along key drainages, providing real-time data on river levels and land movement. Communities downstream, reminded by past events, keep evacuation plans updated, and agencies maintain alert readiness. The lesson is clear. Not every hazard at Mount St. Helens emerges with fire. Subtle forces continue their work, capable of transforming lives and landscapes without warning. Even in repose, the mountain's hazards remain, demanding constant respect for nature's persistent unpredictability. Chapter 7. American Eruptions, Echoes and Evidence What's left after a catastrophe? To study Mount St. Helens is to look at both the landscape and memory, reminders of disruptive power and the long-lasting lessons that follow. The eruption of 1980 redefined the Pacific Northwest, providing a model for preparedness and the urgent necessity of scientific vigilance. That year, the mountain lost much of its summit in a massive landslide, the largest in recorded history, unleashing a lateral blast and ash cloud visible hundreds of miles away. More than 50 people died, tens of thousands of animals and millions of trees vanished in the eruption's path. In the aftermath, the region adapted, forests slowly returned, new lakes formed, and agencies doubled down on research. The eruption's legacy lingers in weekly monitoring, with agencies gathering precise data on seismic events, gas emissions, and ground movement. This rigor ensures patterns are quickly spotted and safety plans kept current. Is this current phase the beginning of peace or another pause before unrest? Only careful data reveals the answer. Comparisons with past events matter, but only rigorous observation, especially steady temperature readings between 2014 and 2016, provide objective assurance. For now, the dome exhibits declining signs of volcanic threat. Mount St. Helens stands not as a dormant relic, but as a monitored, evolving system, a focal point for both scientific discovery and public caution. Chapter 8. Patterns in the Caldera. What endures? Reflective. What do patterns teach us? Inside the caldera, decades of study lay bare truths not found in singular events, but in the rhythms of years. The cooling curve seen between 2014 and 2016 is part of a recognizable arc. Diminishing energy, subsiding surface, and a mountain at rest. Patterns in temperature, ground movement, and seismicity form the best basis for prediction. Generations of geologists examine each trend, adding context and confidence. Yet these patterns, while informative, are never fully predictive. Even as monitors show declining activity, vigilance remains. Any notable anomaly, a spike in quakes, a change in deformation, triggers review, planning, and public notification. Pattern recognition offers communities reassurance, helping calibrate risk and maintaining readiness. But every major volcano, from the Cascades to elsewhere, contains stories of reversal, where quiet resumes are shattered by abrupt awakening. Understanding patterns helps us act. Chapter 9. Education and the Monster's Shadow. 
Does knowledge equal safety or simply greater awareness of risk? For Mount St. Helens and neighboring communities, information is both a tool of protection and a source of humility. Images of the dome's growth, documentaries on past eruptions, and public lectures clarify that complacency is the enemy of readiness. Park rangers offer programs featuring volcanic rocks, time-lapse films, and hands-on science for children. Residents stay updated through agency alerts, emergency kit checklists, and the skills to discern credible warnings. Regular drills and color-coded warning systems are not mere bureaucracy, but crucial lifelines for the community. Geologists use Mount St. Helens to teach humility, a living example of nature's unpredictability and the value of continued observation. Each new student, each visitor to the monument, inherits the legacy of 1980, the lesson that the mountain deserves respect, whether active, cooling, or seemingly quiet. From family stories to formal classes, the culture of careful readiness persists. In fact, as the dome continues to cool, one of the most important lessons is the value of recognizing and interpreting calm, a signal that vigilance has paid off, and also a reminder that the true danger may one day return just as quietly as it departed. Chapter 10. Vigilance, Silence, and the Volcano's Future. And so, as sunlight sweeps over the battered slopes of Mount St. Helens, and wind passes across pumice plains, the lingering question remains. Is the monster gone, only dreaming, or changing in ways we cannot yet perceive? The dome at the mountain's heart, once a symbol of chaos, now settles further into a quieter phase, its breath softened by time and the dissipation of heat. But silence is not absence. Beneath the caldera's hush, instruments blink and whir, tracing away the remaining heat, mapping every tremor and movement. The dedication of scientists, the attentiveness of communities, and the knowledge carved into the mountain itself form a promise that danger and beauty will never go wholly unnoticed. No prediction is infallible, and no volcanic story is ever truly finished. Whether Mount St. Helens continues to subside or one day awakens anew, those watching, scientists, locals, visitors, will be ready. The mountain's journey of destruction and renewal, of cooling and calm, is an ongoing story kept alive by the vigilance, questions, and stewardship of those who have learned to listen. Each calm day beneath the dome is a page in this unfolding story, a tale of patience, perseverance, and the enduring pursuit of understanding. Stay curious, stay prepared, and as the mountain waits, so too do we, all marked by its presence, all alive to the power and humility it demands. The silence of a mountain is not its ending, but the space where knowledge, memory, and wonder continue to grow.